name is Larry Rand. I'm a high-risk obstetrician or perinatologist, and I specialize in complicated pregnancies, particularly complicated twin pregnancies. When you hear that you're having twins, the very first piece of information you want to know, after congratulations, of course, is what the number of placentas is. Are there also two placentas? Or is there just one placenta that both twins need to share? The word chorion in Latin means placenta. So when each twin has its own placenta, that's a dichorionic twin pregnancy. If both twins need to share a single placenta, that's a monochorionic twin pregnancy. This takes us back to the very beginning because there are two ways that you can end up with twins. The first is that you actually ovulated two eggs and each egg is fertilized by a sperm. That means you're going to end up experiencing basically two pregnancies in one uterus at the same time. We call this fraternal twins because they're really two siblings, two genetically different eggs at the same time. They can both be boys, they can both be girls, or they can be one of each. Importantly, because they start out as two entities, they each have their own amniotic sac, their own placenta, and basically are just experiencing crowding in the uterus at the same time. But... Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect, percentage to his doctrine. I'm called the four winds of the earth and all truth and necessary. I'm Lamar and Ariya from the Mississippi Count. Lord willing, this be an edifying lesson. And the title of the lesson will be called. Um, and there were twins in her womb. And this is going to go into Jacob and Esau. And the fact that they were twins. And Lord willing, like I say, to be edified. And I'm going to kind of go into the difference between identical twins and fraternal twins. Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, assume that when they're twins, you know what I'm saying, it's just that. But through a little research, I, I come to learn that fraternal twins are pretty much nothing but, you know, siblings, man, a brother and sister, you know, no different than you having a brother or sister that was born two, three years before you or four or five years after you. And um, the identical twin, which is called a uh, minozygotic, is a... Um, this is a set of twins which are identical that pretty much share the same placenta. You know what I'm saying? They're within one uh, uh, sack, if you will. That way, therefore, they're going to be identical. They're going to get the same nutrition. They're going to get the same, you know, proteins or whatever the child uh, needs and get through his mother, through the umbilical it's gonna, they're gonna receive it at the same time. They're gonna be sharing it, man. Almost like sharing a, you know, a, a drink with two straws in it, you know? And um, as far as the fraternal twins, which are dizygotic, you know, they have their own individual, you know, sacs they're in. They, they was formed from two individual eggs. And they pretty much are, like I say, they're pretty much just siblings who are no different than your brother, sister was born before you two or three years or your brother, sister born after you three or four years. It doesn't matter. They're going to be, you know, having two different genetics that were the identical twins. They're going to have the same genetics because they're within the same, uh, uh, they're within the same placenta, then they're pretty much, from the research, identical twins are like clones because they're within the same, they, they was formed from the same egg that was split, but the same egg was formed inside the same placenta, which is completely different from the fraternal twins, which they was, come the sperm, um, two sperm cells, um, pretty much, um, impregnated two eggs, if you
if I'm saying it right. Two, two sperm cells went into two different eggs because the, the mother was hyper ovulating. Therefore, two, two eggs was ready to be uh, fertilized. So, therefore, the two sperm cells hit the two different eggs and she uh, began to form two, two children in her womb that are pretty much not even the same. That's why you got a lot of twins that when they don't look the same, one might be a boy, one might be a girl, or, you know, or they two boys or two girls, they don't really just look alike. They have completely different features for the most part. That's because they are two different individuals, like pretty much like, again, like a brother and a sister that are years apart. When on the other hand, the identical twins, they pretty much look exactly the same. And when it comes to identical twins, I learned that it can be a boy, boy or a girl, girl. It can't be a boy, girl because the genetics. So I'm going to go into uh, the book of Genesis chapter 25 and, and just go showing that the fact that Jacob and Esau was fraternal twins, which is dizygotic twins, is why they were so different. All right, and Lord willing, I'll uh, be able to read the scriptures and break it down through the, the charts in, the, in that video that you seen in the beginning break down. And it's going to be a, a, this other video I'm going to play at the end. Lord will it be shedding more light and more understanding on this uh, video. So this is, just, this is Genesis chapter 25, verse 22. And the, truck, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why I am thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord Yahweh. And the Lord Yahweh said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from the bow. Now, the fraternal twins, like I was saying, are two completely different individuals. They have their own eggs that they have was uh, that was impregnated or fertilized, and they also had their own placentas where they received their nutrition and genetics and everything. Genetics are different, and the way they received their uh, nutrition was different or whatever they need to continue to grow. So these are two people that are completely different. And that's how Jacob and Esau were, where they, even though they are twins, there are two completely different individuals. And the, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when he, and when her days to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Right, and the twins of her womb were fraternal twins, dizygotic twins, two individuals who have their own placentas and, and, and their own eggs that was fertilized. Jacob and Esau. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now, like I say again, Two completely different people, these fraternal twin, dizygotic twin, even though they're in the womb together, they are different people. They are different genes. Now, Esau come out red, meaning he was like a melanin. He didn't have uh, uh, pigmentation. So they called his name Esau, which means wasted away. And after that came his brother out. And his, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared them. And Jacob didn't get no description because Jacob looked like every other child that was coming to the earth or the same uh, uh, skin pigment of it, all the other people at that time. He had melanin. He was either brown, dark brown, you know, a light brown, but the point is he had melanin in his skin. So, therefore, they they was twins who looked absolutely different because they were different. They were siblings, man, that just happened to be born at the same time. With siblings, our brothers and sisters anyway, but it wouldn't have made no difference if one was born five years before or five years after. That's pretty much the same concept of them being fraternal 
or dizygotic twins. And after that came his brother out. Oh, so I can get out in verse 27. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. And again, a distinguished difference between Esau and Jacob. It say Esau was a cunning hunter. And until this day, you see Esau always going out on these uh, hunting with trees or, you know, camping. And then, you know, they have all these different methods they use when they're hunting. You know, even if it's, you know, particular things that make sounds to, you know, trick the animals to come to them. Or they use particular urines to, you know, cover up their scent. Or they'll use something that make the uh, other animals think uh, some kind of smell that make the animal think another one's in heat to bring them close to him because that's, that's his cunning way of doing things. He's a cunning hunter and he was blessed with the sword, man. So that all goes hand in hand. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. Now, Jacob, which is completely different as far as from Esau being fraternal or dizotic, dizygotic twins, Jacob was a plain man that dwelled in the tents. And as to today, what do you see Jacob mainly doing? Jake having barbecues, Jake having uh, uh, just cookouts, uh, fish fries, you know, hanging out the crib, chilling, playing dominoes, playing uh, 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 spades, you know, just sitting on the front porch, drinking on the shade tree, drinking, or, or running, you know what I'm saying, running around chasing some box, man. Trying to get a woman back to the house or trying to get to a woman house. You know, pretty much just chilling. And that's the same way it is today. So these two individuals, though they are twins and they both was in the womb, they were two completely different people. And I'm going to continue on. Well, no, no, let me, it's another. And, 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 and that goes back into... When the Lord said, uh, said in verse 23, and the Lord Yahweh said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, the nation of Israel and the nation of uh, 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 Esau, man. Two nations, two manner of people, which are twins, but are totally different by genetics. Jacob had a righteous gene. Esau had a wicked gene. So, this is just a Lord willing, like I say, it was edifying, just a quick breakdown through the spirit, man, how Jacob and Esau are totally different because though they was brothers and though they were twins, they were two completely uh, different genetics that just shared the womb. So this is why Esau and Jacob are so different because of genetics. And I'm going to play this other video and Lord willing to shed more light onto it. And Lord willing, your brother was edified. Shalom. Shalom. Hello. Hey, I'm just finishing up some work here, but I'm so excited you're here. Today we get to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is genetics. So excited that you're here with me today. We're going to talk about genetics, but specifically about twins. And twins are really fascinating, and most people are fascinated and want to talk to parents of twins about their twins. So they approach them with sometimes very interesting questions, but sometimes ill-informed questions. So my goal is to educate you so the next time you talk to a parent of twins, you can impress them with your knowledge. So we're going to talk about the difference between identical and fraternal twins. And with identical twins, they're called monozygotic. So monozygotic, mono meaning one, means that one zygote is formed. With fraternal twins, fraternal twins are dizygotic, di, di means two. So two individual zygotes are formed. So let's look at how that happens. So this is the egg here, and this is our sperm. And you can see the sperm is very small compared to our large egg. And if we were to look in the microscope, you would see that a human egg is very, very large and a human sperm is very, very tiny. That's because the egg carries all that good information. And what the sperm brings is the genetic information, which is all it needs to bring. So with your monozygotic twins, what happens is one sperm fertilizes this one egg. Now, in a normal situation, this would then go down into the uterus and then we would have gestation for about nine months and then a baby would be born. That's how most individuals are born one at a time. But in this case, special case of monozygotic twins or identical twins, 
this one zygote then splits into two individuals. So now we have two genetically completely the same individuals. These are essentially clones genetically of each other. They both travel down into the uterus and gestate for about nine months, and you're born with two individuals that are going to be boy-boy or girl-girl. You can never have a boy-girl set of identical twins because they have to have the same genes, the XX for girls and the XY for boys. So these are your identical twins. With identical twins, these are pretty rare. There's actually no known cause. Scientists aren't sure why this happens. It's just an extra set of cell divisions that happens. Um, and it's about one in every 250 births that this happens. So it's just a random chance that this will happen anytime there's a fertilization event. So no reason for that. But when we look at fraternal twins, fraternal twins, again, dizygotic, so two zygotes or two um, eggs are going to be ovulated at the same time from the mother. And that is unusual. Usually it's only one at a time. So in this case, we have two eggs from a hyperovulating mother. And then we have two sperm from the father. So you can see that they're different colors because they're different genetically. So these individuals have their own genes. They are not clones of each other. They're actually no more related than normal siblings who are born years apart. So these are your dizygotic twins. So these can be, again, boy-boy, they can be girl-girl, or they can be girl-boy because they are unique genetically. Um, the odds of this are going up dramatically. So since the 1980s, um, the amount of multiples, not just twins, but triplets and quadruplets have gone up due to all the fertility treatments that people are undergoing. But actually, twins without fertility treatments occurs for multiple reasons. So there are certain populations that have higher incidences of um, fraternal twins. So older mothers are more likely to have um, fraternal twins. Um, populations from Africa are more likely to have uh, fraternal twins as well. And the mother who is going to have fraternal twins is called a hyperovulating mother, and she inherits that. That is a genetic thing. So there are specific genes now that we know you can pass on in the maternal line to that mother to allow her to ovulate more than one egg at a time. So it is something that you inherit, um, and that's what the mother inherits. It has nothing to do with the father specifically. So the mother has to ovulate those two eggs at the same time. So again, when we look at this, this is your dizygotic twins, so those are fraternal twins. These are your identical twins, and again, those are monozygotes. So the next time you see some twins with their parents out and about, you can come up to the parents and say, number one, you're doing an amazing job because you have a very hard situation with multiple kids at the same time. So you're amazing, right? But also then you can impress them with your knowledge. You can say, hey, um, if you have a girl-girl or a boy-boy, you can say, are they monozygotic? And they'll say, what? And you'll say, identical. Are they identical? And they'll say yes or no based on whether or not they know that. Now, the only way you can tell that is by doing a DNA test, which can easily be done. If you see twins that are boy-girl, you can automatically know that they are dizygotic, and you can tell their parents, hey, your dizygotic twins are adorable, right? So twins, they're amazing, fun to talk about with genetics, and definitely not scary.